Know your love. Know that you are willing to sacrifice and give everything for us. Help us, Lord, to hear your message. Speak in spite of me or through me. For this we pray. Amen. Today marks the epiphany of the Lord's Sunday, which may not mean a lot to many people. But it is the story of the three wise men, and it finishes out, rounds out our traditional Christmas story. In the story of the Epiphany, we hear about Magi from the East, traditionally numbered as three, because of the three gifts that are brought to Jesus on their arrival. These Magi started out in probably what is now modern day, or what, I'm sorry, what was Persia at the time and is now modern day Afghanistan, Pakistan, that kind of far Middle Eastern place on the other side of the desert. And they started the journey most likely about the time that Christ was born, and we expect this journey to have taken them about two years. <clears throat> And so they arrive to find Jesus and Mary and Joseph living within a house there in Nazareth. Our story is, is more than just about them coming to, to find Jesus. It, it has a lot more implications to that than that. You see, the story talks about how these three wise men had started this journey in the East by seeing a star in the sky. And we can presume, or assume, that these wise men were not actually Jewish, that, that they had no part, supposedly, in the Jewish Messiah, that they would have worshipped multiple gods, or maybe <coughs> even not any gods at all, and yet, they see the star in the sky, and they know that something is happening in the world that they need to be a part of. So they pack up some gifts, and they set out on this journey. And they arrive in the kingdom of Israel, and they go to the capital, seeking out the one who was born to be king of the Jews, expecting him to be there in the city, where all of the rulers and the temple are. And they come to King Herod, and they ask King Herod, where is he who's been born to be king of the Jews? Probably expecting this king to be Herod's son. Herod doesn't know about this one who was born to be king of the Jews. And he gathers all of his priests together because he's quite troubled that, that there is this other person who, who might take his title. And as he gathers the priests together, they too become in trouble. Because if the Jewish Messiah is in fact born, then life as they know it is about to change. The entire balance of power is about to shift. And they were completely unaware of it until these three wise men show up. And so they start looking through the prophets and they come up with the answer... The king of the Jews was born in Bethlehem, according to the prophets. And so Herod sends these wise men on to Bethlehem, to the city where David, the great king of the past, was born. And asks them to find the child, to search everywhere, and then when they find him, to come back and report to him so that he too can come and worship the child. And as the wise men are leaving Jerusalem, that star that had guided them that far continued to lead them all the way to Bethlehem. And it stopped over the house of Mary and Joseph. And entering in, the wise men encounter the Christ child. And they bow down before him and they worship him. And they present him with three gifts. Gold. A gift for a king. Frankincense, the traditional incense used in the worship of God in the Holy Temple. And myrrh, a burial spice. 
these wise men show just how much wisdom they truly have. As a people and as a group of men who probably had no knowledge of Judaism whatsoever and no knowledge of what Jesus actually was and should have been, they come before him and they acknowledge him as not only king of the Jews, but as king over all creation. They see him not as a god, or not as the God of Israel, but as God Almighty incarnate before them. And then, they see him one step further. They see him as the sacrifice that he will make to be the Messiah. They see a truth about Jesus in the Christ child that even his closest disciples could not understand until the resurrection, almost 30 years later. The epiphany of the Lord is that Jesus was not just the Jewish Messiah. He was not simply a king born to a small country that was otherwise irrelevant in the world. Instead, they see the Lord of all creation, the God Almighty Himself, and they see one who will come and sacrifice His own life for all of those whom He loves, all of those whom He created. It is an open invitation from God to the entire world. And it is on display through these three men who are outside of the Jewish faith. In our lives, we each will come to places of epiphany. Places where we can see Christ most clearly where we can see him as king and lord in our own lives, where we can see him as God, someone to bow down before and to worship, and where we can see him as the one who loves us and who is willing to give up everything for us. To see and to have the epiphany, we look for signs. 2,000 years ago, Jesus was in a specific place at a specific time, and there was a star in the sky to lead the wise men. But 2,000 years removed, we don't have Jesus just sitting in the world somewhere waiting for us to stumble upon him. And there are stars and signs that lead us directly to this one specific place. Instead, what we have is a Jesus that is alive and a Jesus that has managed to be everywhere in the world at one time. And the signs that point to him are the signs in the lives of those who believe him who show that he truly is alive and is still at work in this world. And the question for us is will we see those signs and when we see them, will we follow them? And when we follow them, Will we bow down and offer him our gifts and our lives? And will we accept his forgiveness and place our trust in him? Because that is what the epiphany is about. It is about the signs and the knowledge of Jesus in our own lives. And it is about being signs for others. It is about fulfilling Christ's mission, which is to transform lives and to bring people back into God's presence. People who have strayed on their own, who have committed sin, who have fallen short. But who with God's power and with God's forgiveness are restored if they are willing to submit to and humble themselves before him.
there have been many saints who have walked before us and who have seen Christ most clearly. And these saints have pointed the way for us. They have paved the way for our salvation, our coming to know Jesus. Some of those saints built this church. They're names that you can probably know and remember. Names of those who have gone on to join Jesus in this time. Some of those are saints that are still sitting here among us. Who are still striving and working hard to know Jesus more fully themselves. And to lead others to him as well. May this season be a season where we see the signs in each other and in the faith that each of us has in Christ. May this season be a season where we come and heed those signs and come to know Christ more fully. And may it be, may it be a season where we go out into the world and show others the hope that is in Jesus Christ. The hope that came into the world as a child 2,000 years ago. The hope that was willing to die on a cross on our behalf. And the hope that resurrected and gave us the promise, the guarantee of new life, eternal life in his kingdom. Amen.